Alrighty, YouTube, we are back. Back a little sooner than I anticipated because I uh, took a friend out fishing the other day and she caught her first striped bass. So I figured we could make my uh, one of my signature uh, lucky fish necklaces. So I figured it uh, should be a short video. They come together pretty quick. As always, you start with a template, carve it out, get a rough form here. Uh, see I've drawn the lines here where we're going to put our fins in the middle of the body that way we can start shaping the body down we got to carve the details in the face first that way we don't lose them and <clears throat> pretty straightforward actually pretty simple so let's go ahead and get started going to do our gill plate you really want to make these cuts deep Or a small knife up here at the face. This is the upper jaw of the fish. Okay. Now the pectoral fin. Oh, almost forgot to do this on the other side. Just gonna flip our fish over. Line it up. Line it up as close as you can because they they never line up exact for some reason. Once you uh split them, a pretty thick block of wood. They just press hard. That's why we make copies, so we, we tear through the paper. It's still not a problem because we got the original. We can make plenty more copies. Alright. Pencil. I'm only using the pencil because it's a small area. I always like uh, stenciling my eyeballs on because it's so hard to get the placement and if your placement's off it's just going to look like garbage. Gill plate. Might just a little notch there for detail. And we should be off to the races here. Funny thing is, is the little striped bass she caught put up more of a fight than uh, any of us realized it would because she actually fell backwards and broke her phone. She had it in the back pocket. What is with you ladies putting your phone in the back pocket? I mean, that's just a recipe for disaster. I mean, you sit on your butt. Back pocket is on your butt. So why would you put a phone there? 
But anyways, fell backwards, fighting with the fish, busted a phone. Wish we'd get on camera. It's pretty funny, actually. Been fishing pretty heavily lately. Every weekend going out, stocking up the old freezer. Plus, any of you people out there who actually fish know how uh, enjoyable it is. So why wouldn't you go fishing? Now I'm going to try to make this video continuous the whole time so we don't have a whole bunch of clips for people to have to cycle through. But I don't know how much charge this, uh, this whole camera has, so if it cuts off, i be a little bummed because I'll lose all my uh, videos, but we're going to make sure that doesn't happen, hopefully. Alright, we got to save these fins here. These fins down here are called the pelvic fin. It sits right on the bottom of the belly and we want to come off at a little bit of an angle so they don't actually see how this is in the middle we're gonna have to have it a little bit wider so we can notch it in the middle and have it just come off the body a little bit but the anal fin we can go ahead and take care of that I got a couple more uh, lucky fish necklaces I was planning on trying out this year. Don't know if I'm going to or not though. Or I don't know if I'm going to video. I'm going to do them. Just don't know if I'm going to video. Can't decide whether to make the tail curve or not, guys. Because if I do that, then I'm going to need to curve the body as well. Hmm. Let's see something real quick. So some body curves. Widen that tail fin a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, she won't look too bad if we can get this right. Let's go and give it a shot. Doesn't turn out. Doesn't turn out. Can always start on another one. Oh, tiny knife. Don't lose the eyeball. And this one I'm going to paint up to look, the, uh, to have the paint, same paint color scheme, whatever you want to call it, as the actual fish. Usually I make up a pair, that way you can have one that's painted and one that's just like a wood stain, I call it the rustic version. Now what we want to do, oh shoot, got to carry that over on the bottom half. Sure. 
R for the foul language here, guys. Slips out sometimes. Let's go ahead and carve this off the back real quick. Get that shape. Remember, you always want to go on the outside of the line. My hand is in a very bad. This hand's in a very bad spot, but it's kind of got a how I have to hold at the moment. The reason we're on the outside of the line is that you still have a little bit of meat to work with that you're not cutting yourself too short because uh, once you take the wood off there's no putting it back on kind of like a uh, carpenter's the old saying uh, measure twice cut once that kind of kind of mantra shit that snapped there we go Any fellow fishermen watching this? What is it with other people when you're when you're on the fish, good catching them, good? What is it with other people always wanting you to tell them your fishing spot? Like that's, that's my secret spot. Why am I gonna give it up? Because if I told everybody where I'm at, then the fish would uh, all get fished out. All right, guys. Now we're not gonna cut the front off here. We're just gonna kind of carve our way down to it. We'll, we'll eventually cut the fin off here. Which way is my, my grain is running this way. Remember, always try and go with the grain. It'll make uh, life easier for you when you're carving. shrink our tail down so it's out of the way can give us a much better uh, idea of how much room we have to work with on the body I got three fish in the freezer I gotta mount at some point kind of dragging my feet on that not that they're hard, I'm just not in the mood for them at the moment. And they're for family anyway, so I can take my time with it. Not like they're going to be on my case to get it done.
gonna come up against our gill plate. Notch it out. That way the head has a distinct separation from the body. I mean, separation is probably not the best term, but the gill plate sits over the body. Take a little of this wood off from around the pectoral fin. down a little bit more into the angle we want. Hopefully our details will stay put. Kind of made this uh, pectoral fin over here a little triangular and a little bit small. Oh well. This would be the back side of the fish anyway. Just like a, well not just like, but similar to if you're taxidermying a fish. You have a show side, the side that people see, and then you have another side, the back side, which people don't see as often. I take care with both sides, but more so the show side being the front side that people are going to see more often. I do that with taxidermy, I do it with the wood carvings too. So. And I have to get a divot shallow out this this part here to get a little bit more curve we'll get to that in a minute now, I think we can go ahead and cut our pelvic fins have to be careful because these fins are tiny and they always tend to break easy if you forget that they're there. to cut this middle section out until we've uh, strength, uh, get everything done so it holds its strength. Carrier gill over here.
Now when you're rounding off the belly in the back here, you want to be very careful not to take too much off in certain areas and destroy the general shape of the fish because each fish has a very distinct shape. cut a notch out right here in the middle real quick to give us just a little bit of that curve. Give us a little something something to work with. Since I'm stepping outside the usual box and trying to add a little bit more dimension to one of these. You also want to remember that uh, this is something, if, if you're making it for the reason I'm making it, you got to remember this is something that somebody's probably going to be wearing, and you need to make sure it stays stout in areas that could potentially be fragile. Still got some more fun carvings uh, in store for you guys down down the road. Getting back into some uh, iconic movie characters. Just keep seeming to get uh, distracted with other things at the moment. But still bringing y'all some videos. So hopefully that's enjoyable. Normally I would carve the uh, scales in before we paint it, but that new handy little wood burning uh, trick that I've been using on the birds for feathers is going to work amazing on this guy. I can already tell. Yeah, it's coming along good. 
to make sure the details are in nice and deep. I'm getting ready to chop this off a little bit. Mouth details have disappeared on us. Oh well, I'll carve those back in in a minute. Get our tiny knife real quick. Notch out around this upper jaw. Matter of fact, let's carry it over. Damn pencil. Yeah, pencil that shows up better, and I start using it more than I would the damn pen. Right. Notch out the mouth. Hopefully this isn't a bad camera angle for you guys. But it kinda gotta get in here close so I understand that the angle could be bad. Or on this crummy camera the resolution could be bad, so bear with me for a minute. This little knife that I made gets right into these little nook and crannies that other knives are just way too big. See if I can't improve it. Put a face on it. It's funny doing a lot of these carvings and a lot of fish mounts. You see a lot of the same details in most fish. Most people don't realize that a lot of the fish are all a part of the same family. They're just like different subspecies. Like most people don't realize that bass are part of the sunfish family. Crappie, part of the same family. And you have your bluegills. 
red ear sunfish. You got all these different uh, fish that people don't realize are uh, part of the same family. That's why a lot of them got a very similar look as far as the face. Look at the expression and stuff. Now, obviously, much different looking fish in the body and color and size, but. To my, generally speaking, that expression I have, they all have a pretty similar mean kind of fa facial expression. Right, Gill changed places while I re stenciled that. Alright guys, I don't know how long this clip has been so far, but I'm going to take a little break for a minute, and we'll be back with the next clip after this.